We got the three amigos of this Dallas Cowboys content rocking with me, man. You know, we got Big West Coast, not the little one right in the middle of the screen, man. And we got Landlord, Mr. The Rent is Due. What's up with y'all, man? What's happening? What's happening, man? It's feeling great. It's feeling spectacular on a victory Monday, man. It's nothing better. It's nothing better than a dominant performance by your Dallas Cowboys to show everybody in the world. We made a world statement. <laughs> y'all need to pay attention. They need. They told y'all, hey, take notes. Indeed, man. Hey, man, your people are slid in here, man. It says spin back game. My eyes hey. got tangled up. DC 65 said. Let's go, man. Where my spin back gang at? Where the SBGs at, man? Where y'all at? I want to show my NATOs in this time. Let's get it. done spin back. What's up with y'all, man? The original people in the building. Justin Kitchen, D-Red, Cowboy, uh, Joshua Fisher. I see all y'all sliding in, man. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like and share on the way into the liquor store, on your way into the uh, into the uh, trap, and on your way onto the West Coast, man. Salute to y'all. Yes, sir. And you guys already know on my side of the table, man, I appreciate everybody that's tuning in right now. Appreciate you guys. Do you have a, um, a thumbnail? Can you send it to my uh, inbox on Facebook? Um, but, yeah, I appreciate everybody that's here, man. Let's uh, let's get this thing popping this morning, man. Hey, you guys already know whenever West Coast goes live, there's two things you guys must do. First thing you must do is you must hit that share button. I need everybody right now to hit that share button, no matter where you guys are watching at. I need you guys to hit that share button, man. If you're on Facebook, hit it, hit it. Hit that share button, share the content. If you're on YouTube this morning, man, I appreciate you guys for watching on YouTube. Um, thank you, guys. Hey, if, um, make sure you guys hit that share button, man. Hit that share button on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube, man. Let's have ourselves a good show today, though. And uh, a happy, uh, I don't know if it's, you know, happy. It's not a happy, but we'll definitely um, take a quick, a quick moment of silence, maybe like 10, se 15 seconds, man, in solidarity of what today represents, man. 9-11, man, we will never forget. Uh, those people who were taken today, you know what I'm saying? And we just want to make sure that you guys understand and we understand what's going on here. So let's give about a, maybe about 10 seconds moment of silence. All right, let's do it. All right, man, I appreciate it, you guys, man. Let's go ahead and jump into this, man. You guys already know whenever West Coast goes live, there's two things you guys must do. First thing you guys must do is you must first, first and foremost, you must first hit that share button. So I need everybody right now to hit that share button. No matter where you're at, I need you guys to hit that share button, man. Share the content out to the world so that everybody can see it. You know what I'm saying? Hit that share button. Um, next thing, there's these things called stars. There's these things called super chats. Um, there's these things called cash app. I need you guys that's at the bottom of the screen. Each one of us has our cash app up there. I need you guys to hit that cash app button. Make sure you guys support the content so the content can grow. Um, good morning. I got a couple people over here on YouTube I want to say what's up to. You got Jake the Great over there, um, Justin Kitchens. Justin, you was on here before the show even started. Jay Cash, um, Mr. Fisher, what's up with you, Corey, to the max. And then I see my, fit, my boy Fish again. I appreciate you guys for tapping in. Um, also on Facebook, Facebook, I'm trying to get my Facebook up. Let me see. I got my Facebook up. It says we got like 58, 60 people on Facebook watching too. Tony Green, hey, you got, hey, listen to me. We only have five shares on Facebook. That's why there's only 40 people in here watching. All right. I need you guys to go in and I need you guys to hit that share button on Facebook so you guys can let the world know that we up in here and about to give y'all some content this morning. I got about an hour and a half, almost two hours worth of content. So let's get this thing going, man. Indeed, man. And hey, everybody that support, you know, we got raffles going on. I know my boy Landlord got a raffle going on. Uh, what you what you raffling off over there, Lynn? Um, I got an autograph uh also dig Azul nefarious hat is a one of one. one and of um one. the second place is a uh normal nefarious hat. So if you want to get some of that merch, a lot of people have been asking about it. Only five dollar raffle interest. All right, Wes, you got a raffle going on right now, Kim Folk. Hey, I always have something going on. I will. Hey, you know what I do? I do got a uh, a Stefan Gilmore going, jersey going away for the person that gives up for today. For the person who gives the top supporter, all you got to do is hit that cash app. All you got to do is hit that star button or that super chat button. Doesn't matter which platform you're on. Whoever is the biggest supporter will be going home with a Stefan Gilmore jersey. I'll be doing three shows a day. I got this one. I got a lunch show. And then we got a show tonight, which I'll probably be on jumping on watching this um this Jets game. Because we play them next, so it actually makes sense for us to watch the game. Oh, live. I'm I'm locked I'm locked in on that game. Yeah, man, it makes sense. And we actually play the Jets. I'm gonna have to watch the film anyway. You know what I'm saying? So it makes. We'll watch it live. Yeah, you might as well watch it live. It makes more sense. And so what time does that start at five? 
uh, five your time, seven our time. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, we'll, I, we'll, lock, we'll lock it in and do that. And I, also, I am running a raffle as well. I am running one, giving away a copy of Madden 24. I'm running one for a Dallas Cowboy jersey, and I'm running one for a Dallas Cowboys bobblehead. So there's three prizes. One entry gives you an opportunity to win all three. It's five dollars a uh an entry. So if that interests you, if you want to, you know, uh improve your odds of winning, just send five dollars to the cash app, or you can send a super chat like double R just did. Double R super chat is somebody, and he said, uh, if the cowboys look that good in the rain, can't wait to see them in normal condition. This defense is scary great this season. Facts. Appreciate your uh, support, Mr. Double R. Indeed. Appreciate Double R for the love of support, man. Yes, sir. Because uh, he ain't lying about that. Yeah, man. I mean, last night, was, hey, last night was just ridiculous, man. It was just absolutely ridiculous. But real quick, man, before we even start this thing, man, Facebook only has 40 shares. We got 83 people in here. That means I know for a fact half of you guys have done what you need to do. If you're excited about yesterday's victory, man, we got to show this, man. We got to show it. Reciprocate it by hitting that share button. Also reciprocated by hitting that star button. Also reciprocated by hitting that cash app button on uh, at the bottom of the screen. So I need right now on the count of three, man, count of five, actually. We're going to give everybody an opportunity to hit that share button. Don't be that one Cowboy fan in the comment box that's looking at, yes, we're talking about you. You're the one that's not helping the nation grow by being stingy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fact. So, hey, hit that share button. If, you're, if you are excited about the Cowboys winning yesterday, hit that share button. All right, let's go. Five. Four, three, two, one. Hit that share button. If you're on YouTube, share it to um, share it to, to to Twitter or X. The X, you know, whatever they call it now, X. And not that X, you know. I know, I know some of y'all a little nasty in your downtime. <laughs> so not the X you pull up with nobody at the house. You go to the X when you on there talking crazy to the to, to mother fan base. But you don't hit that X that you pull up when you uh when you when your when your wife and your kids leave the house. Right? Please don't hit that. Yeah, one. don't hit that. One. And salute <laughs> to my boy Charlie Jones for the five dollar uh cash out. That he said he uh, five dollar super chat. He said yo, Shout and also. Salute to DC65 over there with the $20 super chat to uh, somebody's page. He said, great That's start for RD. So salute to him. And hey, he got, to you, he, sir. he got four He got four entries to your raffle. Charlie Jones, you got one entry to my raffle. I appreciate you for supporting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This defense was very exceptional. Like, I don't know how many 16-letter words I can come up with mm -hmm. to try to describe to you the dominance that this defense showed, y'all. So we can we can break it down by all three phases, right? Let's talk about your defense because they stole the show. They told Dak Prescott, sir, take your day off. You know what I'm saying? Simmer down, <laughs> relax, you know, kick your feet up. You can do what you please. We got you today. It's raining. It's ugly. Don't nobody want to be out here. And we would not let nobody score on us today. So what y'all feel about your defense? I feel about our defense, what we thought going into the season. We said that we had an opportunity to be one of the best defensive units in the National Football League. Mm -hmm. and, and listen, going into going into this week, unless, you know, somebody gets shut out in this game, the Dallas Cowboys will have the number one scoring defense in the National Football League. Nobody else this week pitched a shutout. But the Dallas Cowboys went on the road, you know, in a hostile territory, bad weather, and we pitched a shutout against a playoff team. Hmm. I know, I know, we don't like the Giants. I know that we say that they this and that, but they 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 were a playoff team and they won a playoff game. So they so technically they got just as far as we did last year, and right. we went out there with they new forty million dollar quarterback, you know, and their um however many million dollar running back, and we shut them boys down, man. Daniel Jones, you know, Daniel Jones was, was had nothing going, man. You know, even even with even though runs, we like he he got a couple of runs early on, and then they out here try to pull a Florida sweep that Tim Tebow used to do, and he can't go nowhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so shut yeah. them down and in, in, in every aspect, passing and running. So I loved it. Yeah, right. I mean the Giants had every reason to try to play well last night. They had every reason. They were at home. They're coming off of a uh, you know, the furthest round that they've you know they ain't the the that was last year was for one of the furthest they've gone in the playoffs in a very very long time. So. You know, and it's a home game, you know, Monday night, not Monday night, Sunday night football. Like this, that was a, I mean, that was a, that was a big game for the Giants. Like they could have really established themselves off this season. Now, keep it real. It doesn't matter really what they do because the Giants know that 
everything that they did this offseason was not good enough to beat the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> so you're literally in the exact same spot that you were in last year. So if I'm the New York Giants, I do not feel good about myself at all. They spent a lot of money, and it still all, didn't man. help them at all. You know, we didn't even spend as much money, and we still got – we got way better, it looks like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Super better. Hey, we better sweet, we, I don't mean oh, to cut ahead. you off, but let me uh give a shout-out to S.A. Richburg for the $10 cash app. I appreciate okay. you, and that got you a, uh, a raffle entry. And also, shout-out to my boy Michael Nelson on this end with the $5 Super. Uh, he said, total domination, Cowboys uh, Nation. Do not watch the three, four-letter networks. They are haters. Yes, they Facts. are. Facts. Big haters. And salute to you for the raffle entry. But continue on, then, Lord. I, I, I know how it is when you get started. We uh, we a little yeah. bit older, so, you know, we, yeah. we don't start right back up. We might forget. Uh, shout out to Jeremy Silas with the $3 cash shop. I appreciate you, sir. But, um... Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> hey, real quick, shout out to uh shout out to Miss Kelly Bourne with a ten dollar cash. I appreciate you. I was I was on the verge of something. Um, we were talking about the uh the Giants might be ish. Oh yeah. Well we were talking about how they did everything in their power to get better and they still was worse. So, you know, they spent a lot of money. They 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 um used a lot of draft capital getting all these fast track players. I told y'all it takes more than being fast to be a wide receiver. I don't know why people think just because you can run fast, you can be a great wide receiver. It takes much more than that. And all they talked about was, hey, we got fast players. They fast now, y'all. Jalen Hyatt, I said this on my show. I said they said Jalen Hyatt was, uh, had a chip on his shoulder. What happened to the chip? We didn't see the chip. He was chipless. Because that's all they said. He going to run some routes on y'all. We didn't see any of that because I told y'all the whole time, and this is no disrespect to the Giants, they they are a good team, but we just great. It's a different level. It's a different level. Our defense is a great unit, y'all. This is why I had so much hubris to talk the way I talk about any other offense playing us. I know that our defense is so solid that it allows me to speak this way. It allows me to be this confident. I, I have supreme confidence in my DB room, in my safety room, and in my pass rush. So, like, why would I be afraid of anybody? This is why I said they might be good, but it ain't going to be good enough. I didn't have yes. confidence in Daniel Jones consistently making good passes on my defense and my pass rush. It does not happen, and it did not happen. No, it didn't happen. And listen, hey, can we just can, can I give a, a shout out to our secondary real quick, man? I'm including the the the, the corners and the safeties. So hey. first and foremost, shout out to one yay. Uh he was the one that blocked the uh the punt, I mean the mm -hmm. uh, the, the field goal, and then also shout out to uh Noah hey, Ibnagani. Thank you. God. You knew yeah. I was gonna struggle. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, a real yeah. friend right yeah. there. When, he, when, you, when they see you in distress, you know, they come to your aid. That's a yeah. real friend. I'm gonna butcher his name. So <laughs> yeah. Him. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Trayvon Diggs. They said my boy couldn't tackle. Hmm. He he forced a, a he forced a, a heavy hit. You know that that George the ball lose so that uh the run bland. Salute, salute to him. Get his pick six. Uh, salute to Stephon Gilmore, new addition, former defensive player of the year. Got an hmm. interception. You know, hey, listen, I don't know what the hell Daniel Jones was trying to was trying to do on that throw. You know, disregarded. He was running for his life. He was seeing goals. I don't know what the hell he was trying to do. Hey, running, one, running out of bounds, threw the ball back at the plate. Let me give Ryan Yeah his proper props, though, because, look, he did that block true enough. But what I love to see, in my when I put my coach hat on, I love to see that this young man made the block, got up, and ran and made an actual block. Facts. And got him open to run, run, the, run the score back. That right there showed me. That's why I said, man, that boy's showing y'all that, hey, I deserve to be out here. I belong. This is a UDFA that's showing you, hey, I value all my time and my reps in this game. I'm finna show you why I deserve to be on this field. That was tremendous by that young man. man. Yeah, man. And I'm going to tell you one thing I like about it is last night, last night game was like there was no individual superstar on the defense. Like – we could all sit up here. If we, if I asked you guys who was your favorite player from last night, right now, every one of us would probably say something different. Why? Because, man, every last night, every, there were so many people that contribute that contributed to this, the, to that, to last night's performance, and and it was so equally balanced across the. It was so equally balanced across everything. Like it was just, it was just a beautiful thing to see. And you know this, you know one thing I will say like this is I don't really. 
I don't really credit either quarterback for playing well or bad. I think either quarterback played as good as you could play in the the conditions that you were playing in. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you this right here. Um, I say like this, man, like the Cowboys went out there in a game, a major, a big game for, for whomever it was because the Giants had more to lose than the Dallas Cowboys did. And guess what? The Cowboys went out there and absolutely produced. You know, there's going to be folks that are going to say, ah, this is only one game. But guess what? You can only judge by one game. And if the Cowboys would have lost 40 to zero, then guess what? We would have been looking at we would have been looking at this totally different. You know what I'm saying? Agree. Somebody so, just what? put a, a I know that's that's hey. Peter. Welcome back, Peter. Welcome back, Peter. Peter, I'm gonna tell you this right now, man. You know, I know you wrote that. But ain't nobody got time to read all that, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> he put welcome a back, man. Man. All right, welcome hey, back. I am gonna say this though. Uh I am gonna give some props to the LBE, led the team in tackles, surprisingly. You know what I'm saying? I am I, I am a big critic of Leighton Vanderes. You know, I, y'all know I wanted Bobby Wagner. You know, I wanted I, you know that Le- Leighton Vanderes in my eyes, you know, he is like a uh a Honda Civic and Bobby Wagner is a Bentley truck. So you know I wanted to I you know I wanted to ride Bentley, ride through the block, you know, let them know that we having things. But uh Leighton, hey Leighton Van Der Rez was, was reliable last night. So I'm gonna give him some love, man. Let the team in tackles, six solo tackles, you know, great uh great for L V E. You know, and listen, we said that we would have better, you know, interior defensive line play that would help our linebackers play better. So, Leighton Vanderes had a good night. Uh, our safeties who play pr- play primarily in the box had a good night. You know, Damone Clark made some hits, even though he should not have hit uh, Daniel Jones as late as he did on that on that one no, penalty. It, it was actually J. Ryan Kirk. They, 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 they got it wrong. They got it wrong. That was J. J. Ryan all day. Well, Jay, uh, you know what? Well, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm gonna act like I didn't see that because you do yeah. too much. With the team. Yeah, yeah, that was that was totally J. Ron Curse. Damone fell on top of him, but Curse laid the hit, and then Damone was like right on top of him. So they made it look like he did it, but it it, it literally was J. Ron. J. Ron leveled him, so he gave him a hit too. But hey, he thought about running the rest of the night though, so he did send a message. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's what, I like that. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I was gonna say. Let me go ahead and. Oh my running damn ball hat on. Okay. Cause cause we ran the ball. Go ahead and throw my running damn ball hat on. Yeah, you know I mean. Somebody talking about they told West Coast. I told you West Coast. I hate when people tell me I told you West Coast. If you if you <laughs> ain't made a video about it, you ain't told me. <laughs> tell me one thing and then be the next thing the next day. So you gotta you gotta tell me you gotta make a video and solidify. A lot it. of people don't be accountable for when they told you and it was wrong though. Exactly. You know, they, they, just, they just accountable when they was right. You know. What I mean? have, hey, real quick, shout out to the original people for the five dollar cash app, and uh, continue though, West Coast. Oh no, so it's like shout you out know, to them on my end too. Hey, shout out Action Policy. I, I think I, I think I'm, I'm pretty. If y'all got it, I know I got it too because he always he show love like that. So I appreciate yeah. you, my boy, Mr. Brown. He moved like that. He moved, yeah, he like, moved that. like that. If he's in five, it's really fifteen. You know what I'm saying? We appreciate you. But hey, but um, let's talk. Let's start. Let's start with the obvious, man. Let's start with with the, what. What is a hater gonna say? At wake up and say this morning. I'm a, a hater's gonna say this. The quarter that got saved by the defense. That's what the hater's gonna say. Okay. When I I want to ask you. I'm a I'm a hater because you know. You know, I'm a, well, actually, let's not do the hater talk first. Let's go through. Let's we got to do the offense. But yeah, let's oh, go we through did the defense. defense. Let's do the offense. Yeah, let's do the offense. I start. I started off from what I liked, what I seen, and what I liked. I like the fact that we actually brought back screens. We reincarnated screens in this offense. It, it came back to life. You know what I'm saying? We never seen this many screens in a game that I can remember. I remember, uh, what a couple of years ago. For for the last three, four years, we've been begging for screens. We haven't had screens. We had at least three or four of them last night. And they was effective. And they got us easy yards. And that's what we want to see. And we got, like I said, the way you look at how the OC should call this game is when you evaluate the talent we have. We have right. players who good in space. Throw some screens to them. Get them in space. Like, it's common sense stuff. And I was great. I was happy to see that. One more point that I like to see that we actually got Turpin involved on the offense, y'all. Like mm-hmm. people is up here mad at Dak and Mike McCarthy because they didn't throw four thousand yards and stuff. But we seen a glimpse of how effective this offense can be in bad weather. They still they still score like twenty seven points, still but people up here points. talking about because basically because Dak didn't throw a touchdown. I said this on my show, and I'm gonna let y'all go. I wouldn't give give one iota 
if Dak never threw a touchdown pass this year, if long as we were scoring, I wouldn't care. Look, if he if he think, if he making all the plays and we get to the red zone and hand it to Tony Pollard, I wouldn't care. What's up, Dion? Who? Why would that matter? Long as we getting seven, that's all that matters to me. I don't care how it come about. Thanks. So that's what they that's what the main screen want to try to nitpick about. You gonna nitpick and try to make a fan base feel bad about a forty to nothing win? That is ridiculous, man. Yeah, and listen, uh, as you pointed out, my good friend. Uh, the, the Dallas Cowboys offense scored 27 points. Hmm. You know, 27 points in a bad weather game while on the road in a new in, in a new offensive system. Against then, a playoff team. And then I want to also throw this out there. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys had four drops. There was four drops, two drops occurring in the end zone. Peyton Hendershot dropped what, what should have been a touchdown. Jake Ferguson dropped what should have been a touchdown. So, you know, we're, uh, we're out here talking about, you know, oh, uh, Dak Prescott not doing this and do, doing this and that. Dak Prescott looked good for uh for for the circumstances. He went out yeah. there. He had complete control of the offense. And uh one one thing I do want to point out. This is a power stat for y'all. You remember we were talking about what Dak Prescott's numbers were when he throws the ball in like two points whatever seconds uh given to when he holds the ball. Well, last night, uh Dak Prescott was the fastest quarterback in the NFL in time to throw. He got that mug out in 2.1 seconds. Man. I mean, it makes sense. So, hey, we did. He, they, they did offensively what we asked them to do. Yeah. Yeah, and the old line looked, looked good in protection, too. And Dak, oh. no sacks. No uh, sacks. One more thing. Uh, Achuma, I am so sorry. I said that you wasn't shit. Uh, <laughs> I, I, was t- I was calling for the young guys to play over you. And you went out there and you had a fantastic game. So, Chuma Idoga, you were fantastic. I am sorry that I, I talked crazy about you on this platform. Please forgive me. I was not familiar with your game. Uh, you looked good last night. So, salute to Chuma. You came in and you played very good, you know, in the place of Tyler Smith. So, my apologies. I told you Mike McCarthy had them little guys that he be he be fond of and we don't be understanding. I like give him a little grace because he was like that with Terrence Steele and it worked out well. Now, he's like that with Josh Ball, and we haven't seen a glimpse of good out of it yet. So, <laughs> you know, we'll we'll have to wait and see what happens. But, hey, Gil, Mike Mike know what he be talking about on the more line a little like, too. Yeah, man, and I'm going to just – just looking at the game, man, last night, I told – I said one of my big things is I kept saying regardless of how the weather was, there should be a Cooper Rush sighting in this game, and there definitely was last night. So hmm. salute to the Dallas Cowboys for, you know, whenever you see a backup quarterback game, your backup quarterback in, you know, that's a great sight, especially when your your starting quarterback is healthy. Dak Prescott, 13 of 24, 143 yards. Daniel Jones, 15 of 28, 104 yards and two interceptions. The one thing I will say is this, man, you know, in the rain that was in the in the weather that was portrayed last night, both teams felt that it was not necessarily or nor that could they throw the ball more than 30 times. You know what I'm saying? Because neither team got over 30 pa- even attempts. They didn't even mm-hmm. attempt. So that lets you know that weather was a factor last night. Now, for the people whose TV wasn't 4K like mine and you could see the big sheets of rain, that wasn't like, listen to me, cameras in America, are, are they're so good. The cameras in the world are so good and so 4K HD that when it's raining, it, you can't even see it. It just looks clear. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But when they turn the camera up this way and they're shooting it in the sky, you could literally see how it was Forrest Gump rain out there. It was pouring down. It was thousand Gump. Case. It was pouring. It was Forrest Gump rain out there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so Dak Prescott. I mean, this is the thing. In a game like that, you're not even. You are not even evaluating the quarterback's play. Like you know what I'm saying? The quarterback's job is to hand the ball off to the running back and to whomever else. And that's what the Cowboys did. Dallas Cowboys, I'm going to ask you guys, Tony Pollard had 14 carries for 70 yards and two touchdowns. You guys think that was great, awesome, or amazing? That was superb. That was great. Now, but I'm going to tell you this right he here. Did, he did fumble one time, but yeah, we got it back. Up. So, But that's the only that's the only bad thing I can say about Tony Pollard. He still made some explosive runs like he normally do. He was looking like normal Tony to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm going to tell you all this right here. I'm just going to make you guys want to make you guys all feel weird for a minute because I know it's a lot of people out here. That are, hey, a shout out to Tony Pollard for doing what he was supposed to do, but this is all I'm going to say. 14 carries for 70 yards. That's just about what I, that's what I presume that Tony Pollard's going to have. This, you know, that, that's where I think about where he's going to be. And guess what? The same thing they did with Zeke last year. So that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm, that's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know, because I'm, I'm just saying, 
Yeah, a lot of us had us under the impression that Tony Pollard was going to be getting 14, 15 carries and was going to be getting 126, 130 yards. No, that doesn't happen. That doesn't well, happen. Yeah. Now, think about this. Now everybody's going to look at that 14 carries and be like, yeah, but look at the per average. Go ahead. No, I actually going to say it happened multiple times for Tony last year because, you know, he got he had multiple 100 games. He never eclipsed 15 uh, carries. So it happens for Tony. It just wasn't going to happen last night. You know what I'm saying? But I don't expect him yeah, to have each, a lot of yeah, – Remember, each one of them games, he also had like a 35-yard or 40-yard run to, to help yeah. those out. So, yeah. I mean, so, yeah, he the, way we, the way we were playing last night, you weren't getting – he on 14 carries, he wasn't getting no 100 yards. Well – not not last night, but you know Tony Pollard is uh, the player that had the most explosive runs in the NFL last year. So you know, just from his track record, I could see him having a couple hundred yard games like that. Now, okay. granted, let me, let me give um, Tracy Hodge some love with the nine ninety nine. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, Miss Hodge. Salute to Thank Tracy you. Hodge, indeed. So yeah, so granted, I don't you know I don't expect a hundred yard for Tony Pollard. You That's know, a weekend. Oh, okay. A salute to Tracy Hodge. Yeah. Uh, but uh yeah, I don't expect a hundred yards from Tony Pollard week in and week out. But what I do expect is a is a, over a hundred yards on the ground from the Dallas Cowboys as a whole, and they reach that and they reach that plateau. So if Tony is, is limited to 70, 80, you know, yards, 60 yards, and we still uh reach our hundred yard or over a hundred yard mark, I can live with it. Yeah, I'm I'm listen to me. I can live with it too, but I just like pausing because I I you know that you know, listen to me. I love y'all too, but at the end of the day, I love at the, as content creators, man, we got to start. We, we got to point the finger at fans when y'all, when you guys, you, you know, I mean, it's okay to say one thing, but we can't be obviously hypocritical sometimes. That's all I'm saying. I got folks sending me stuff, you know what I'm saying? They, you know, sitting thinking, you know, think we got Herschel Walker out there, you know what I'm saying? So that's all I'm saying. Cowboy fans, the expectation for Tony Pollard, to be honest with you, is probably going to be to use him the exact same way that they used Zeke last year. And that is about 14 carries and a couple, a couple catches. It's nothing against Tony Pollard. It's nothing against Zeke. This is how they view their running back. I ain't going to lie, though. What about it's Rico, really though? Rico looked good in his carries he got. Yeah, but he only got six. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just yeah. saying he looked it effective. That's what I was saying. This, oh, this yeah, he, Rico. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, Rico looked effective. The Cowboys yeah. don't want like this. Like Everybody's like, we want this bell cow running back. We want this individual guy. We don't want that at the running back position. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. They yeah. don't want that because ten million, ten point ten million dollars a year, and they basically still use Tony the exact same way they used him last year. So this is just how they view the running back position. So is that a is that a representation of the O line though? The success the run game had. They they gave up no pack no sacks, and m both of the the normal backs carried for over four yards of carry. So that's a, that sounds like your O line was balling. Hey, also, I'm glad you you mentioned O O, o line. I don't mean to cut you off, but shout out to Tyron Smith. That was his, that was his first game at left tackle in over 600 days, right? Because when he came back last year, he did not play a single snap at left tackle, and he was superb. He did not give up a single sack or a single pressure. So no, yeah, no, no pressure old game. I told you, bro. I do not want to live in a world where Tyron Smith doesn't play left tackle again. I think that's foolish, yeah. and I'm telling you. Because last year it went foul to me. You know, we judging him off something he don't do. And it, off a right tackle, bro, put him back where he belongs, and you're going to see Tyron Smith at least still be one of the better left tackles. I ain't saying he's going to be the GOAT that he used to be, but he's still going to be one of the better left tackles in football. And it looks like if this game is an indication of what we getting for the rest of the year, it looks like he might be normal Tyron. Yep. Mm -hmm. And hey, I'm going to tell you all right here, uh, Tony Potter had a long run of 25 yards. Salute to him last night. Cowboys actually had four guys run the football. Deuce Vaughn ran the ball toward the end of the game. Um, he had six carries for eight yards. Um, he, he had no going, and uh, it was, it was pretty, pretty this slow. Is, this is what I'm going to say right here about Deuce Vaughn. You're, you, you guys should not be – You should, nobody – what's up with your auntie, Regina Green? Listen to me. Green. Nobody should be disappointed with Deuce Vaughn's performance, and nobody should be excited because – where everybody should have had proper expectations and should have known that your fourth string running back was probably not going to play a lot. When I was when I was watching the game and it's like second quarter and I'm hearing people say put Deuce Vaughn and I'm like, what are we thinking right now? <laughs> like Cowboy fans, this isn't about, you know, like I feel like sometimes we just want to see certain players play. No, we want to see the best players play. <laughs> we want to see the best players play at all times. You know what I'm saying? So 
you know, salute to Deuce Vaughn for getting his carries last night, six carries for eight uh, for eight yards. But to be honest with you, Deuce, he kind of remind his utilization on this team is kind of like the kind of reminds me of what my what kind of like what my 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 son's team is doing with my with my baby. You know what I'm saying? They're more they're not necessarily getting them ready for these first games. They're getting them ready for the end of the season. You know what I'm saying? When they're gonna need those extra backs that are gonna be able to run more and stuff like that. But right now, I think the Cowboys use him exactly the way he's supposed to be used. You know what I'm saying? I, I think he might get like down the line in the season. You might see him get involved more like in the red zone or something sometimes. I know Mike like the mismatches. And he'll they'll probably use him as a mismatch guy. That's where you seen Turpin start to shine. In the towards yeah. the towards the end zone, you seen Mike say, Hey, I wanna I want a mismatch. I want somebody to match up with Turpin. So now you put Turpin in at running back. I loved it. I ain't gonna lie. I told you. If you go back and watch Turpin in high school, TCU, this man was doing everything. He wasn't just a wide receiver. So if you can bring that versatility back to the NFL, like to the NFL, that's going to be a tremendous weapon for you. Yeah. He said, was Hunter active? He was. He was blocking his ass he off. Got, he got in and, and pulled back. And that's, that's exactly, and that's exactly what we want from Hunter. You know, like, hey, we got Tony Pollard. We got uh Rico, we got Rico Dowd out there. Both of them boys average over four yards a carry. Like, just go out there and blow somebody up, man. Somebody says, So your son sits on the bench. No, my son is a six year old playing on an eight year old team. That's what he does. He said, uh, So we understand that at six years old, you know, I'm playing on an eight year old, uh, eight U team, but at six years old, he's probably not going to get as many reps. So, you know, what we do, he gets, he gets his reps where he can get them at. Facts. Facts on top of facts. everybody ain't going to be, you know, the all star as soon as they start, you know. What I'm yeah, matter basically not playing in a younger, a older league. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is my thing. It's your first year playing tackle football. You go out there and you start in first year. It probably means your team ain't good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, probably means your team ain't good. Hey, Rick, hey, like Roxanne Clark pointed out, Lukey was one of the was one of the leading blockers on that Turpin touchdown. So you know they utilized Hunter the way I wanted to see Hunter use. And hey. I'm gonna tilt my hat to uh, Mike McCarthy. He showed some versatility in the run game in the in the in the red zone. Cause you know they went from under center to a pitch. You know for uh, for for uh, Tony Pollard on one of those touchdowns. You know they had a, a, another toss the other direction for Turpin. So they they figured out how to get into the end zone even even with the drop passes. And we're listen we're we're, we're sitting up sitting up here. We forty we forty know this team. It could have been more. Like we we seen the tight ends and listen. I know nobody wants to hear this. But wouldn't Dalton Schultz have caught a lot of those passes? Bruh, if you had Dalton Schultz, this game's probably 60 points. <laughs> and, and listen, and I know that Dalton Schultz didn't do shit with his new team. He also has a rookie quarterback, too, yeah, though. Yeah, he had a rookie, had a rookie listen quarterback. To me, saying, listen to me. You were corny if you're posting Noah Brown and, and Dalton Schultz's stats. They play for the Houston Texans, and they have a rookie quarterback. Like, what was you meaning? He is. So, you know, yeah, the Dalton Schultz would have probably caught that. So, Hope ho- would have ca- probably caught them balls. Now, hopefully, the tight ends clean it up. You know, hopefully, you know, uh, it was just the nerves and the weather effect. Dalton affected could get hands. down the field. Like, Dalton could get down the field. Dalton has a – Dalton Schultz who has a faster 40 time. Then, then he has a 40 – Dalton Schultz is a faster tight end than, than Ferguson. You guys just – I'm going to tell you what it is. It's the illusion. Ferguson looks faster. But he's not. Dalton Schultz is the faster tight end of the two, and that is actually factual. You go Google their their start their forty time. I but think I think Fur might have just had a little butterflies, and it was raining. I think he'll be fine though. I put it to you like this: I, I'm I'm in I'm I'm. You can say that, but no, I'm always I'm always going to judge people in their sphere of what they are right now. And I'm gonna say this: the Cowboys took a gamble on a bunch of things, and as of right now. They were looks like they'll be okay in the running back room. Why? Because they're going to change the way they do things. But in the tight end room, it is like we you, you got to think like this. We're talking about the tight end room, and your tight ends were more targeted than anybody else last year, last night. Tight Ferguson got seven targets. Peyton Henry got eight. You know what I'm saying? Um, then CD got four, four. That's eight right there. Hey, y'all don't jump off. I got to make, make a phone call. I right, go say. handle it. Eight. I mean, I, I mean, you the the two tight ends, two tight ends had just as many targets as seven other dudes. So Dak still loves the tight end very, very much. And to think about this, the most targeted person that Dak threw the ball to, who Jake Ferguson, seven targets. Well, he caught two of them for eleven yards. Yeah. See, you know, in a, in a in a messy game, though, he gonna target the tight ends a little more probably anyway. That's why that's why I'm saying in a game like that, in a game where it's wa- where it's wet and inclement weather, man, your tight end 
that's how it's supposed to be. You're tight because your tight end is closer to the. It's 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 a shorter throw to the tight end than the wide receiver. For sure. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it makes sense that the tight end would get more opportunities. And think about this. Look at this. This this is how you know how bad the weather was because you got Ferguson, who's the tight end, who was your number one targeted person. You had Tony Pollard running back, Cavante Target running back. That's six targets right there, right? And that's that's more than what C.D. Lamb, um, C.D. The, Tony Pollard and Cavante Turpin each had one target less than C.D. Lamb and Brandon Cooks, and those are wide receivers. The weather so one thing sure. you could say if you if you wasn't pleased with the tight end play, you know what's gonna happen. That that Ferguson might have left a door open for school making this game because they 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 see Ferguson dropping passes, they might be like, let's see what school will do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For real, like that, he might have really opened the door for school making next game. Brandon, uh, Jake Ferguson caught two passes for seven for 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 eleven total yards. Someone in the comments box said he had two really good catches. I know for a total of eleven yards. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, um, did Schoolmaker play? I don't think so. I don't. I don't think I don't, he got. I don't remember seeing him out there. But he didn't get I a gotta target. watch the film again. He didn't get. A, I know it for sure. He didn't get a target. So uh, salute. You know, obviously salute on that man. Um, but just man, just this this defense, man. Talking more about this defense, they held Daniel Jones to 15, 15 to 28, 104 yards, 32 percent quarterback rating. He got sacked seven times, lost 47 total yards. Um, they had they had two situations where they had back to back sacks. Like the defense was just ridiculously locked in. Um, Darren Waller, who they traded for him, he had three catches for 36 yards. Isaiah Hodgins, one catch for 24 yards. I mean, Waller was their most targeted tight person on the field, and he got targeted five times, was only able to bring up three of those, man. Defense just absolutely just sat back there and teed off on this guy, on these guys. Daniel Jones, $45 million quarterback, who people actually said was supposedly supposed to be better than Dak Prescott in somehow. Did you did you hear your boy Tiki Bob? Yes. That ain't my boy. I don't know that. <laughs> I don't know. You know but uh but, yeah, Daniel Jones, the only thing that he actually did that was anything worth a damn was running the football from the quarterback position, which I told y'all he was going to do. You know what I'm saying? He ran the ball 13 times. That was the most effective. He was actually damn – he was almost as effective – he was probably almost more effective than, than Saquon Barkley. Yeah, Saquon, Cause, cause Saquon got – Saquon had 12 for 51. Daniel had 13 for 43. So, yeah, yeah. he was damn near and more effective than the damn, than the damn actual running back. He just kept – we kept breaking contain and he kept um exposing it. But it only lasts for a drive. I felt like it was going to just be a drive. That's what I said. We actually have coaches that know how to adjust these days. So it's it's a beautiful thing to see. Yeah, man. You know, a lot of times, you know, we can we, we can simulate pressure with our front with those stunts and those loops. But, you know, a lot of time when you do that, there will be, you know, lanes for the for the running back to step up and uh, take off in. So they took advantage of that the, the first drive, like you said. And then after that, you know, they had much better integrity. And even, you know, they, they try to get to their play action game like they did some film study. Because D Law, you no, know, totally just let the dude go. He said, F it. If he throws, if he, if he, you know, Runs it, he just runs it, but he we went and took Daniel Jones out the game a couple of times. Yeah, they said they said they they pressured them on two thirds of the dropbacks he did. But the reason I was like I was just about to beg a question. I got confidence in my front seven, right? Do that's one of the only critiques I ever make on Dan Quinn. I believe he do a little too many stunts. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes I be like, bro. Simmer down. I think I think we good enough to just beat them sometimes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just man to man. Micah gonna Micah gonna beat them. You got D Law gonna beat somebody on um, man to man. So I mean, sometimes I think you need to relax just a little bit with some of those stunts. That's what get us in trouble against those mobile quarterbacks. At the beginning of this game, too, like Dan Quinn kind of decided to go smaller too. So because mm -hmm. Mozzie really didn't even get into the game until like then like the second series. Because Mozzie was not in on that first defensive series. And um, I wrote that down. He had Osa, who, who ended up having a really good-ass game. You know what I'm saying? I mean, obviously, the Cowboys did exact, knew what they were doing because the end, defense ended up with seven sacks and four turnovers. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, I will say like this. I was very, I was, I was happy for what I saw last night. Um, obviously, you would like to see them do, have the same type of performance, in, you know, when it's, when it's not raining. But I'm going to tell you this right now. It's hard. It's, 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 it's hard to stop a team from scoring a touchdown, but it's damn near impossible to stop a team from scoring a touchdown and a field goal. That means they ass was not even 
that means they there was not even a moment in the game except for that one missed kick that they felt that they were in point range. They like, did all that good stuff field, in that man. one drive. They did all that good stuff in that first drive and then did a fumble snap and screwed it all up. And yeah. then tried to kick a field goal and got blocked. Like, and that was, was just terrible. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm going to tell you, Mike McCarthy cleaned it up, too, because that first drive we had was not the first drive we got inside the red zone. We had six plays inside the – you no, know, we had five plays inside the red zone, all passes. You know what I'm saying? There were – there. you know, I'm going to tell you this right here. Like, you know, Kellen Moore was no genius, but I feel like every offensive coordinator in America wants to throw the ball, bro. <laughs> they all want to throw the ball, bro. It's just a matter of how much of restraint they do or do not. But Mike McCarthy – I think last night he had a moment. He had like a small moment of clarity. Like, wait, time out. What am I doing? Run the and then our yes, and then our whole <laughs> offense just changed. Yeah. yeah, hey, but to piggyback on what you said about the defense, uh, these are the top ten players in the league in terms of um, pass rush win, uh, pass rush right. win rate. Arden Key from Tennessee, Dorrance Armstrong, number two in the league right now. Uh, Quitty Pay. From the Colts, the Real Taylor is at four. Will Anderson at five. Dante Fowler is at six. Sam Williams is actually tied with him with the same pressure rate. So the Dallas Cowboys have three players in the top ten of pass rush win rate. You know, uh, as of today. Yeah, I seen Sam coming off that edge too. I seen Turf toe where? Out. Yeah, I seen him coming off that edge. He ain't look hurt to me. I seen somebody say he look hurt. I hey, seen him screaming out that is. I got one more. I got one more crazy ass stat for you. So these are the pressures that each of our players got. Micah had six. Da had six. Osa had four. Chauncey had four. Dante had four. Sam had three. Da uh, the Marcus Lawrence had three. Lve and uh, Gallimore had two, and then we had five other guys that had one. Can so we get also Diggy Zool some credit though? Can we get him some hey, props? Real from? quick, real quick, <laughs> real quick. So there's thirty. We had thirty. Oh, I thought you were done. My bad. Nah. Go ahead. Th- there were thirty nine total pressures. This man only dropped back twenty five times. I told you two thirds of the dropbacks he was pressured. Yeah, and he got pressured multiple times by multiple people on those <laughs> on those dropbacks. So he was so running for his life. Running yeah. for his life. But yes, let's do give Osa some uh some credit, man. Also looked like he took a jump, Denny. Also, also looked cool. like he took a jump, y'all. And we seen also, like also was one of the few people who actually flashed as a young defensive tackle in this league. When he first got with us, we seen some potential in also. <laughs> like we seen, we like wow. Also was flashing, getting tackles for loss as a rookie, as a rookie defensive tackle. So now we seeing him fully mature. It looked like also finna have a monstrous year. When you seen, when I seen him in person. Dude look like he didn't bulked up and he looking monstrous, y'all. <laughs> it look like he ready to go crazy. So hey, shout out to Oso Diggy Zool, man. Y'all know it's it's looking good for him, like coming in this year, man. And uh, we got a lot of questions in the interior defensive line, but it look like Oso trying to um hold it down. Yeah, and I'm gonna tell you a hey, salute to Luke. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you like this. I'm I'm not gonna be hard on LVE, but I'm gonna tell you like this. Salute to LVE for looking like LVE. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not about to give him three, four minutes after four years. Thank you, LVE, for looking like LVE last night. All right? Let's talk about someone who looked way better than we probably would ever, ever. Do y'all know who number 14 is? Because if you don't know who number 14 is, you know who number 14 is right now. There's no way in hell you're about to talk about LVE and giving him credit before you talk about number 14. No way in hell, bro. Number 14, yes, that guy that you was like, Man, listen, bro, we, Cox. We, already, we already gave LVE credit. You know, I yeah. gave him credit earlier on the show. Like this, LVE was on the sideline giving Marquise Bell credit. <laughs> <laughs> they was going crazy, bro. Talk to me about my boy Marquise Bell, first game start, one of his first game start. Listen to me, man. I personally don't see how the Dallas Cowboys take him off the field when Donovan Wilson comes back. Easy. That's Ranye. Ranye the one that, that ball too. So he'll be the one that have to come out the field. I mean, hold on now. They played. They, there was there were snaps where they had four uh, four safeties on the field. So you, you well, it's true, 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 true. They they were, they were, they were play where they had four safeties on the field. So uh, Dan Quinn don't give a damn if you if you play good, <laughs> he will he will put you in. So wait a he, minute, wait a minute. Was it me or did uh, J. Ryan look skinny with the number one on? Don't he? He looked skinny with the number <laughs> he one. Looked, he looked like a he little did. too small with that one on. Man, you got to go back to that twenty seven. <laughs> Look a little light in the um behind, man. You I don't know, man. 
the the the, the, the jersey just looks small. He looks skinny yeah, now. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, he looks slim. It's yeah. Now. It's a wide receiver number, man. Yeah, it looks skinny on him. Like every wide receiver that's like tall and skinny and fast wears number one. Yeah. He said tall, skinny. But yeah, Marquise Bell, eight t- eight total tackles, six solo tackles last night. Um, one tackle for loss, man. Absolutely did his thing. LVE was right behind him with, with six total tackles, too. Um Salute to them. Hey, I'm gonna tell you someone else who had who had a. I mean, li- listen to this stat line, bro. Listen to this stat line. Three total tackles. He had two sacks and three tackles for a loss. Who is that? Say that one more again. Don Armstrong. Yes, he had three total tackles, two sacks, and three tackles for a loss, bro. I kind of apologize to him last. Three I mean, tackles for a loss. Apologize means, again because you were talking crazy. Think about this. I was talking bad. About think about this. He had three tackles for loss, right? That means he's he 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 tackled the he tackled the running back in the backfield three times, right? Think about this. If you just change the quarterback, the quaint to change position, and he hits the quarterback instead of the the running back, Brad Doris Armstrong has six freaking sacks last. No, five sacks by himself. Now one one of the sacks was clean up. But the now, one of them on, was man. him by himself. Now I'm I'm giving him a proper credit now. No, one no. of them was him by himself. Real talk. Listen, but he did listen, some tackles for loss. I do, I do to know, you you say clean up like, like that's a bad thing. It's not bad. Because he could have got away. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah, bad. Listen, yeah. he could have not clean had cleaned up. Bad yeah. when yeah. trying to pay you. Katrina, <laughs> clean up is only bad when you're trying to get paid for it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I could I could agree with that. I could agree with that. I don't care. As long as we get the sack, I'm I'm in for it. But you're right. Like it matters when we're talking about, you know, how much you finna make. Yeah. Now, and, yeah, and, I have and, a feeling Marquise Bell was somebody said, How do you feel about Marquise Bell playing linebacker? I feel like his stat line says that's linebacker. He you ain't can, leave the box. You can do that. You can get away with small linebackers when you got some real bulking defensive uh interior. We that's why I was concerned last year. Before Hankins, I was like, man, these little safeties ain't going to work because the uh, guards might just blow them up. But we got a little bulk in the uh, interior defensive line. Now they they can run and roam free. So, yo, you can have some smaller linebackers now. Like, it, it can work. Yeah, I agree with that. And, hey, listen, the, the problem with the Dallas Cowboys, they went super small at DT, and they tried to go super small at linebacker with the safeties, too. All in the same year. Uh, all in the same year. So somebody got to somebody gotta fight these damn uh, guards. Guards, yeah. There, there yes. was some bigger-ass grizzly bear uh, in, in, the middle, in, in the middle right there. So you're going to have to have somebody that can go toe-to-toe with them. So, you know. But, all hey, I heard they, about was their defensive line, though. They, That's hey, all what, I was hearing about. No, that 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 was you heard. What, what I sit here and told you they wasn't good. Uh, <laughs> how many how many weeks did I sit here and tell you that the, uh, yeah. the, 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 the Giants were not a good run stopping team? As long it's as they weird, they but they, they got good personnel, but they still ain't good. They, they must just not be disciplined. They play <laughs> a three four. Yeah, the, the only team I remember stopping the run in a three four is Tampa, and yeah. they have Vita Vea. I don't see Vita Vea over there. Dexter Lawrence gets sacks. Leonard Williams gets sacks. Them guys over there in the defensive, I didn't see, I didn't see Antoine Robinson like that. So you know the, the DT they got over there get sacks. So you know they ain't got no run stoppers. So as long as you stay in that three four, you got a you you got one, you got a uh, you you got one less big body out there. I mean, if you're, if, you're running, backers, if you're running on the ends, you're not gonna even get and see nobody for four yards. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. There, there's all kind of integrity issues with a three four. Now you could bring pressure, you could bring all kind of exotic looks. You know, it, it's good. It's it's not a bad defense if you had the personnel, but they ain't they ain't got the they ain't got the DT. They ain't got the big nasty in the middle. You know, to uh, to stay in that three four like that and stop the run. There was a reason that uh that we were a better run stopping defense than them last year, and we were bad at stopping the run. So if we were a better run stopping defense than them. That should tell you something. Yeah, he said coming from someone that's got to say TP is overrated. Tony Parr's not overrated, but we had seventy yards, bro. No, he was talking to uh, he was talking to the Choctaw. Damn, oh, okay, man, listen, it. listen to me, y'all. Listen to me. At the end of the day, the money's already spent. So now it's just about making sure that these guys get used correctly and how they're. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, Tony Pollard. I say it like this: the whole superstar mentality because the Cowboys don't really want to play nobody. I mean, they don't want to pay one nobody. I think that is going to diminish. You know what I'm saying? I don't think I think this game, I think every game this year is going to be a very balanced team, a very talent. That's what the Cowboys want. I mean, and to be honest with you, it kind of makes sense. 
because then you're not totally dependent on one person. Like, think about this. The Green Bay Packers have been solely dependent on Aaron Rodgers, and even though he is the greatest, how many Super Bowls does he get them? One. Man, what's so crazy is, like, somebody – I, I got to mention this, but uh, your boy Burrow had 82 yards pass, and they put up three points. But when you rain? go to the when you go to these mains – was it in the rain? Yeah. But okay. when but when you go to these mainstream media people, they're gonna talk about Dak and, and, and Mike McCarthy. Like Joe Burrow ain't just get two hundred and some million dollars the other day. But I, I that's that's a story for another day. Well, you know, certain you get certain, you know, um things looked over when you don't play for the Dallas Cowboys. When you play in Cleveland and Ohio and stuff, you, you know what I'm saying? It's a difference between playing for the star. That's all that means. Mm-hmm. But, yo, man, uh, I ain't going to lie to y'all. I'm going to have to depart. I got to go back to work. I got things to do. Y'all can stay on here for longer if y'all want to, though. <laughs> Shoot, I got a couple more minutes. Landlord, are you out or you got to go? I got a couple more minutes in me. All right, let's ride. All right, well, I'm going to holler at y'all good people, man. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Lan. But um, uh, his, all right, let's read a couple. Let me read a couple of these. Well, actually, let me let me finish looking at this real quick. All right, so rushing. Let's look. Finish looking at this rushing. Tony Pollard, fourteen carries, seven yards, average five yards per carry, two touchdowns. Rico Dow, six carries, twenty-four yards, average four yards per carry. One thing I like about this is the Dallas. I mean, Dallas Cowboys ran the ball thirty times, and guess what they did? They passed the ball twenty-five times. So the Dallas Cowboys in 2023 are one and zero when they run the ball more than they pass. What are your thoughts on that? Hey, that sounds like an efficient, you know, a balanced offense. You know, it's never gonna be 100 percent balanced, but I like it like that. You know, I I lean heavy on the run, especially in conditions like we was playing in. So that's smart football, West Coast. That's what you call complementary football. You know, when your defense playing the way they play. You don't have to do all this risky stuff. You run the damn ball when your defense is playing the way they playing. You, you yeah. give them a little risk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's like it's smart football too, man. Like because in like you got to think like this, fellas. Like there's a really high chance at the end of the season because the bad weather that you're gonna get in playoffs and outside games is gonna be what in the, the end of the season. So the mm-hmm. Cowboys showed us not even on a on a micro level. They showed us on a macro level that they can adjust for different types of game and still have a very, very high output. Like, it's crazy because I said that this game was going to, you know, if you would, I think a lot of people was thinking like, damn, the this, this should have been an over game where the Cowboys scored 40 points by themselves. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's crazy. And I'm going to tell you this right here. You know, the Giants were probably should have been more prepared for this situation. Why? Because it was at their crib, man. You know sure. what I'm saying? So, you know, this was just a, a total, a total, you know, and, and if you're the Giants, man, this hurts. Like, this hurts because you don't even get a chance to see the Cowboys again for a minute. So it don't matter who you beat next week, the week after next. It don't matter. This this right here hurts. This hurts. A team that you have already – because you got to think, a team that you historically cannot beat just blew you out, bro, in the first game of this season. Not blow out. They obliterated them boys, bro. It's like, that's, that's – it's, it's a different like, – look, two, three scores is a blowout, West Coast. Now, we could say if we beat them by 21, that's a blowout. You got to take it up a notch in the level of disrespect NFL teams when don't, it's 40 it's to zip. happen to NFL teams. Zero points? Like, 40 zero. to zip? You lost by 40 points? <laughs> like, that just doesn't happen in the NFL. That doesn't happen in the NFL. Listen, if they would have scored 10, if it would have been 10 to 50, that still would have been ridiculous. You lost by 40 points, bro. That's that's sad. Not only that, you lost with a goose head. Hey, man, yeah. that's very disrespectful right now. I mean, the Giants could listen. The Giants could go undefeated all the way until they play the Dallas Cowboys again, whenever that is. I think that's like Week Nine or something. And guess what? It's still still not gonna matter because going into that game, they're gonna be like, "Damn, yes." And then but. they gotta come to Dallas. And then they gotta come to Dallas. <laughs> they gotta come to Dallas, y'all. After getting beat like that, that's sad. Yes, sir. Um, real quick, let's. I'm, I'm gonna tell you this right here. If you think about the teams. I, w- I was able to watch all of – a little bit of all of the – I was able to watch, obviously, Cowboys and Giants. Then I watched that Philadelphia game. I wasn't able to watch all of the Commanders game or whatever they're deciding to call themselves now, but I did watch a little bit of it. But I'm going to keep it real. If we're just looking at the NFC East, if I'm ranking the NFC East teams right now, the Dallas Cowboys are clearly the best team in the NFC East. Like, right. I don't – I'm don't, taking a step further. They we, don't, the best, we had the best showing in the league yesterday. We did. We had the best showing in the league. And that's what your quarterback only completing 
Think about this. You score 40 points and your quarterback only completes 13 passes. You got zero yeah. points from the quarterback, man. So think about this. If Dak, if it's not raining with the same output, probably 60 points, bro. That's ridiculous. Listen, we just put up 40 points in a shutout on the road in the rain the first game of the year. So this is our starting point, West Coast. This is what people don't realize. Theoretically, this is, this should be the worst game that you see the Dallas Cowboys. This is our starting point. This, this should be our worst game. Yes. Like, we have to build from here. That's what's different. Like, listen, we are not. A, this is not a complete team yet. So, of course, there's things we got to work on. Like, we've seen a couple – we've seen a fumble. We've seen some drops. We've seen stuff like that. We, you know what I'm saying? It's still a building block. We, we going to build from this moment. So that's what's crazy about it. This just showing you a glimpse of how good this team can be. Yeah, and my boy uh, DJ DJ Williams says, Patriots had two chances at the end to beat the Eagles and failed. Eagles did not look that good. They did not. You know what, you know what the Eagles look like? A first, a first, the Eagles are a first-half team. Go look at the Super Bowl. They came out firing on all cylinders, ready to kick some ass. Second half. They did not do it. Exact same thing in this game right here. They scored like I think they scored like 14 points in the whole first half. They scored three field goals in this the net in the third and fourth quarter. One by five. Yeah. I agree with all that. Uh the reason I came back though, I just realized though, if I don't shut it off, it's gonna stay live until I come back from work. All right, can you can you give us like five minutes? I yeah. think it'll cut off if we cut it off though. No, I'm talking about like y'all will still be on here, but it'll still be it'll just be showing my 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 empty ass screen. All right, so let's let's, let's give them content. We talk about that. Just give them some contact, and then when you when you say you gotta go, then we all gotta leave with you. So <laughs> I mean, like I, I have to go. Oh, now. He gotta go now. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, damn. Okay. Then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll we'll holler at y'all, man. You know, I go by landlord from Alabama with the same hound on our social media. I'll be live tomorrow around about 10, 11, and uh, well, eleven Central Time. So y'all make sure y'all pull up, stop by. In the trap, I appreciate all the love and support of Landlord Sports. Let's go. And, you know, me and Wes, we're going to still do this uh, watch party for the Jets tonight, right? Yes, that should be a weird. I'm on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's see, I don't know what. I, I, I'm taking that as a hell yeah, so let's get it. Hell yeah. Hell I, yeah. Well, hey, Landlord, we're going to send you the link, too, because uh, F that job. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you know, how many times you hear people just give you a stern no, with, with like with no explanation? I'm bringing that back. In Wait, somebody, somebody said we've seen plenty of teams start 8-0 and miss the Super Bowl teams catch win after that bye week. Um, Yeah, that happens. We've also seen a, a team that didn't that looked like they weren't going to make the playoffs, you know, 9-16, and 16, end up going to the Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? 9-7 and seven twice and won it. I'm doing That's that to all my kids for the rest of the year. What? And when they ask them, I'm just saying no. I'm not explaining anything, like not because I got to do this or I don't. No. <laughs> just, 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 no one, just, just no one. Just no one leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a stern no, and that's it. Yeah. But all right. You guys already know what it is, man. Never look down because it starts up. Peace. Peace. Peace.